Hi students, we've got a detailed lesson today all about the first conditional, how to form it, when to use it, and some variations on this sentence structure. There are tons of examples in here, and I'd encourage you to try writing your own first conditional sentences as well. You can download the full text from this lesson, which also includes a quiz, by clicking on the link under this video and entering your email address. Okay, so what is the first conditional? When do we use it? We use the first conditional to talk about results of possible future conditions. Let's look at these examples. If it's sunny tomorrow, I'll go to the beach. If it rains tomorrow, I'll stay home. If she studies hard, she will pass the exam. If you finish your chores, you can watch TV. If we don't get to the airport on time, we'll miss our flight. If he doesn't call me soon, I'll send him a text message. If you save money, you'll be able to afford that new phone. If the restaurant isn't too crowded, we'll have dinner there tonight. I think you can see from those examples that there are two parts to a first conditional sentence. There's the condition, that's sometimes called the if clause, and then the result, that's sometimes called the main clause. So, if you study this weekend, that's the condition, you'll pass the test on Monday, that's the result. If you don't study, that's the condition, the result is you'll fail. If I wake up early enough tomorrow, I'm going to make a big breakfast. If we don't save money this year, the result, we won't be able to buy Christmas presents. It is possible to reverse the condition and the result with no change in meaning. So, if you don't study, you'll fail is the same as you'll fail if you don't study. If I wake up early enough tomorrow, I'm going to make a big breakfast is the same as I'm going to make a big breakfast if I wake up early enough tomorrow. Just note that when the if clause, when the condition comes first in the sentence, we use a comma after it. But when the result comes first in the sentence, then we don't use a comma between the two clauses. Let's look at how to form the first conditional. Pay close attention to the correct verb forms in the condition and the result. The condition is if plus the subject plus the present simple. If we go to the party tomorrow, if you don't leave work soon, if she gets promoted, if he doesn't read the textbook, and the result is the subject plus the simple future. That could be will or won't or going to and not going to. We'll have a good time. You'll get stuck in rush hour traffic. She's going to earn more money. He won't understand the class. Notice that even though both events are actually in the future, we always use the simple present in the condition, in that if clause. It's a common mistake to use the simple future in the condition. So don't say, if we will go to the party tomorrow, we'll have a good time. The correct way is, if we go to the party tomorrow, we'll have a good time. Don't say, if it won't rain tonight, I'll go for a walk. The correct sentence is, if it doesn't rain tonight, I'll go for a walk. Okay, both the condition and the result are in the future, but we use the simple present in the condition and the simple future in the result. Now, both the condition and the result can be positive or negative with not. Let's look at these examples. If you take the train, you'll get there faster. Positive condition, positive result. If you don't take the train, you'll have to drive. Negative condition, positive result. If you take the train, you won't get stuck in traffic. That's a positive condition and a negative result. If you don't take the train, you won't need to buy a train ticket. That's a negative condition and a negative result. Now let's look at some variations in first conditional sentences. So it is possible to use other words instead of if in the condition part, like when, as soon as, and unless. We use when, when the condition, will definitely happen in the future. Look at the difference between these two sentences. If I see Sam, I'll give him your message. I'm not sure if I will see him or not. When I see Sam, I'll give him your message. This implies I will definitely see Sam. We could also replace if with as soon as to emphasize immediacy. For example, 
My feet hurt. As soon as I get home, I'm going to take off these high heels. As soon as we have enough money saved, we'll take a vacation to Costa Rica. I'll respond to your email as soon as I can. And finally, we can use the word unless as a substitute for if not. So you won't lose any weight unless you start eating healthier food is the same as you won't lose any weight if you don't start eating healthier food. I'm not going to dance unless somebody invites me. That means I'm not going to dance if somebody doesn't invite me. Unless there's an emergency at work, I'll be home on time. That means if there's not an emergency at work, I'll be home on time. We also have some alternative words to will or going to in the result. So instead of will or going to, we could use modal verbs like can, might, could, or should. So compare these two sentences. If you go out in the rain, you will get wet. That's 100% certain. If you apply to that university, you might or you could be accepted. So it's a possibility, but that result is not 100% certain. We can use can in the result to give permission or prohibition. For example, if you finish your homework, you can watch TV for an hour. If you don't have a ticket, you can't get into the theater. And as you saw earlier, we use might or could to express a possibility, a possible result that is not a certainty. For example, if he gets home from work early, we could go out for a walk before dinner. If you try to lift that heavy weight, you might hurt yourself. And we can use should in the result to give advice if the condition happens. If your toothache doesn't get better soon, you should see a dentist. If they go to New York next week, they should visit the Statue of Liberty. We'll wrap up this lesson by looking at the first conditional versus other conditional forms in English. First, let's compare the first conditional and the zero conditional. So the zero conditional describes general truths and facts. And in the zero conditional, both the condition and the result are in the simple present. When it rains, the ground gets wet. That's a general fact, a general truth. If I'm late to school, the teacher always yells at me. This always happens. So zero conditional for general truths. But the first conditional describes a specific event that will or might happen in the future if a future condition happens. As we saw, the condition is in the simple present and the result is in the simple future. If it rains tomorrow, I'm going to stay home. That doesn't always happen, but if it rains tomorrow, the result will be, I'm going to stay home. If I'm late to school today, I'll miss an important test. That's not something that always happens, but a specific instance. If I'm late today, I will miss an important test. We also have second conditional and third conditional in English. Both of those describe imaginary situations. So in the second conditional, we are imagining the result if the present were different. If I were a millionaire, I would buy a sports car. But the present reality is that I am not a millionaire, so I'm not buying that car. And in the third conditional, we are imagining the result if the past had been different. If I had taken the earlier train, I would have gotten to work on time. But the reality is that I did not take the earlier train, so I did not get to work on time. So second and third conditional describe unreal or imaginary possibilities, but the first conditional describes real future results or possibilities that will happen if the condition happens. Let's look at these last three examples. First conditional, if I have some free time this weekend, I will read a book. So it's a real possibility that I'll have some free time and I'll read a book. Second conditional, if I had more free time, I would take dance classes. So I'm just imagining. The reality is I don't have much free time, so I'm not taking dance classes. Third conditional. If I'd had more free time yesterday, I would have cleaned the house. This is also imaginary. The reality is that I didn't have free time yesterday, so I didn't clean the house. All right, well, that brings us to the end of this lesson. I hope I haven't confused you too much, but your next step is to try the quiz inside the downloadable PDF. 
which you can get when you click the link under the video and enter your email address. English grammar can be quite tricky, but I have lots of lessons that will make it clear to you. You can get my basic and intermediate grammar ebooks to give yourself a good foundation of essential English grammar or join my advanced grammar course to really master the details of the language. You'll find all my courses and ebooks at my website, EspressoEnglish.net. I hope to see you over there.